Bueno, mi gente, volvimos. We are back at it again. Today, guys, we got Byron. So, a quick story on Byron. Byron is actually one of my very first clients that came to me after I became a YouTuber. You know, once I became that waiver on the internet that was known for the most crazy wolves. I think you guys remember. So I remember seeing him come through with his do-rag and instantly just thought to myself, well, I've never cut him before. He has a do-rag. I have a do-rag. We both have waves. Well, I mean, my ways were different. No shots at you, Byron. I'm just saying, you know, I was dipping. So I took a wild guess that he knew who I was because of what I used to do at the time, what I was doing at the time with my waves. But yeah, so he sat down, he dabbed me, you know, he showed up with love and respect and he just let me know like, hey, I know you from YouTube. And from there, in my mind, see it's different. And I wanna, I would definitely wanna put it out there that once you start getting clients from putting content out into the internet, uh, at least for me, it was kind of weird because uh, sometimes, and I think this came from working with Basio, uh, I remember seeing him just get so many clients from all the videos he was putting out into the internet and their expectations were like unrealistic. They were set super high, right? And I think that's great. But at the same time, if you're not ready mentally for that, it could be a lot of pressure, right? So, you, you know, your butt was feeling pressured. And this is not even a hard, difficult cut, but I, my mind was just not, centered i was not in the right place so uh i remember his haircuts taking me forever because i i just never got out of my own way i definitely wanted to say that to say this that i no longer feel like that especially cutting byron and just appreciate those moments whenever you feel pressured and you just want to just run you don't run you deal with it you confront it and you overcome it period so that's what are we doing today we're overcoming some cuts we're overcoming byron's cut so uh let's uh go on and get started then So, um, how do I say this to you guys without sounding crazy? This is not crazy. This is just me being completely honest with you. The only purpose of me cutting his hair, Byron's hair, like this, strictly for this thumbnail. I'm not even gonna cap it. We, we were on a mission to find a thumbnail. And uh, as I was uh, carving away at the, the hair to create some type of shape that I thought, that I personally believe will be appealing to the eye, uh, I just got to the point where I was just like, I'm gonna leave this patch in his hair for the service, for the most of the service at least. And you know what? I got that idea a long time ago from um, Nate would do it to some of his young clients. Some of the clients would know that Nate would leave the patch throughout the whole service till the end and you know, Nate would mess with them. But something told me that Byron would not know for a second that I was leaving this this patch of hair on the crown of his head. And um, what, what, what can I say? Sometimes you just gotta have a little fun. Don't do it to some of your serious clients though. They won't mess with that. But you know, you, 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 you know, you'll know as you service the same clients who you could do this with and who you absolutely do not do it with and byron is absolutely the person to do it with so uh just just remember that don't mess around with the wrong person all right you know it's still a business but you also want to have fun i'm just saying i'm just i'm just saying Okay, boys and girls. So Byron has very, very, very light corners. So when it comes to like a C cup with Byron and like creating some type of like, 
ice pick sideburns. It's just, it, it's never looked good on him. I remember in the beginning, he would ask just for like a shadow fade. And I'm looking at his size like, bruh, this is not for you. Absolutely not. And in the beginning, I, it was, I did exactly as he asked, but it got to the point where I had to do it. I had to suggest something better that would make him look better, that would enhance his look. And that's important, guys. We, we gotta remember when it's gonna be the right time to just, uh, yo, what do you think about this? There are some exceptions and there are some new clients that you wanna try that with, but it's not the norm. The moment you get a new client, you wanna make sure that you make them feel comfortable and, and, and that you care about their opinion first. I did that, I started suggesting the high taper, and guess what? He loves it, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so let's zoom in and look at what he's working with as far as that edge line because uh, the hair grows at a different direction. That's actually why I never dragged the number one guard all the way through because the hair grows at a different direction. So the way I treat that is by having a higher guard and I just kind of like carve away. So in this case, I'm using the number one and a half Babyliss guard and I'm just going from open, slowly closing it and making sure that the shade in the front matches everything else because if you run the same length that you ran throughout the whole head around an edge line that grows from a different direction it's going to come out looking lighter you're going to cut it shorter because evidently you're going against the grain around that area because it's growing at a different direction so just pay attention to that because there's nothing worse than somebody that has waves or, or is going for a similar hairstyle and all of a sudden you're just you know you're cutting with the grain boom you patch them up Ooh, so that leads to this, especially for new clients with waves or that ask to be cut with the grain, go higher than what they normally ask for. Because like that, there is more room for error. There is no room for error if you're already cutting them exactly with what they want or just any low guard. Be careful guys. Be careful when you take on this mission of cutting with the grain. There are some rules and regulations you gotta follow and make sure that you follow them because if you don't follow them, there is gonna be hell to pay hell to pay. Okay, this uh this high tape is coming along mighty fine mighty fine as you can see that we have taken out all the possibilities of having any type of c cup it is gone it's nowhere to be found you want to make sure there's nothing there but you also want to leave you want to kind of curve it you want to uh what's the term what's the term guys that they use in the makeup you want to contour the bald initial guideline because like that when you line up you still have that vertical bar that leads low, close to the eyebrow, okay? You don't wanna take all that away, you wanna curve it. Make sure, curve that thing, curve it.
so <clears throat> hold up. <clears throat> okay, so right here, as you can see, after I started the fading process or the taper in the back, uh, somewhere along the lines, I just looked at it and said, you know what, this is the um, this is too low. So I went back and just went higher on the bald baseline. So um, you know, sometimes it happens, guys. Sometimes you you're looking at what your work is looking like and you're just not completely satisfied depending on how much how long your services are there's always going to be a little bit you know time to do it to do something to go back and raise the fade but just be careful when you choose to do that because sometimes it is like sometimes you really are too far along and you just have to take a, you have to take the silent l okay but at the same time on that on that note, if you have a slow day or something, just take the L, the silent L, and go back and do it, you know? So figure it out. That's what I did here. I took a silent L, and uh, I just went back and did it again, and went higher on that taper. On that tape -huh. The tape -huh. that patch of hair look at that patch of hair that's that looks like it could it could potentially be a new style how crazy would it be if all of a sudden you start seeing these type of hairstyles on instagram all of a sudden you just start seeing people just ask for it that would be wild and you know what to be completely honest i've done videos in the past where it becomes like a trend maybe not for long it doesn't go on for longer than a few months but y'all remember when i did the whole um dollar tree challenge and i had like shaving cream all over my head there was a lot of people that did that so how crazy would it be that was my son by the way how crazy would it be if people just start asking for this let me know if that ever happens to you in the barbershop and somebody just says you know what i want this leave the patch matter of fact shape it up that would be wild you know what let's do it who's with me let's let's start asking let's start suggesting this in the barbershop Patches on the crown, baby. Patches on the crown. Y'all see these vertical bars though? These vertical bars are looking solid. I put a little bit of color, shout out to Tune 45. And uh, yeah, it's just enough to look natural. I didn't want to darken it up too much. Um, I still have a lot of space for improvement when it comes to color enhancements, but I have been using it quite more often uh, than I usually do. I, actually, you see how I'm lighting it up with a the, with the towel? That's actually not a bad idea. What do you guys think? Look at that, look at the before. Look at the before. He, he needed some help. And I got him right. Look at that. Look at that patch on that head, baby. Yo, we are tapping into a new market, guys. 
Let's do this. Patches on the head. It's patches on the head season. Look at his face. He was loving it. He didn't even know. <laughs> My man Byron didn't even know. Yo, I should have left it. I, I should have let him walk with that. I said it too soon. I should have let him walk. But then I think I was a little bit behind, so I had to catch up. But sadly, we had to cut it off. Snap, y'all seen that wink? I just realized he winked. Do you think that was intentional? Yo, play it back. Yo, was that swagged out? Was that like, yo, I'm feeling myself wink? Or is it like, yo, my, my eyes twitching wink? That was, if that was, I mean, that was just your eye twitching, Byron. That was like perfect timing. I must admit, that was, that was perfectly done. But anyways, guys, that was it. That's the cut. Let me know if it's patched out season. Should we start it? Should we do it? Should we start a new trend? I'm with y'all. If y'all with me, I'm with y'all. We'll start suggesting and make it make it just like the new thing. You know, because if people can do the shagged out, you know, haircuts that y'all do in Texas, I'm just saying, why not do the crown? You know, I did the hump in the front. Huh? Y'all remember when I did that? That little hump in the front, the Fonz? The Fonz, y'all remember that, right? So why not do the crown? I'm just saying. But that's neither here or there, guys. Look, that's the video. That's the cut. I hope you guys loved it. If you did, make sure you press that like button. I'm just saying, let's get to, to a thousand and up likes. All right, let's do this. I can believe, I believe in y'all. I believe in y'all. And uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And uh, what, what else can I say? We out here getting things done. Make sure you getting something done.